I um, one time on For Glory, I hit random and I got Wii Fit and I That's fought crazy. against a. That's crazy. I fought against a For Glory Is it Samus. For money? No. Is it for money? No. Yeah, that, that, he did it for money. He did it for a lot of combo breaker. Are they button check? I think they're yeah, they're button checking. So. Numbers here, obviously going to be going with his typical defensive ledge camping play. Did he come out to a character that won't Wait, know is this? Uh, I, hold on a second, because these are normally... Okay, okay, okay it okay, is. Okay. I, I was very thank, confused for... Thank you, thank you, Angel, for clarifying. <laughs> yeah, I was very confused for a second. Um, Little did we know that was the ultimate mind game. John Numbers just won game one. He just won game one. There it is. The whole chat is going 1-0 right now. As is uh, standard in Twitch chat, once a game one happens after, a, or rather a hand, hand warmer happens. Um, but again, Numbers probably going to be going with his very standard play of his ledge camping. He's just staying as long as possible on that ledge to force out, you know, some options from. Uh, no. Um, from uh, Angel. And I think Angel is one of the better players at dealing with um, legend, uh, Ledge Camping in the game. For yeah, sure. usually when I watch these sets, I don't see Numbers committing wholly to that sort of Ledge Camping style. He seems more akin, like he likes to enjoy a little bit more of this, like, like, like throwing out the Sun Salutations. He's a little more aerial based in general. And, ooh, goes for the hard read on that, uh, on the header and doesn't actually get it, but he puts number, uh, sorry, oh, Cortez off stage once again. Right, and that back hit fair right there, almost taking Cortez down with him. Again, Numbers actually had incredible follow-ups um, after that, that um, back hit of Nair, because it is a soft spike at this, at this percent. Again, that ledge play that we mentioned earlier, going to be, again, how John Numbers really just evens the percent up here. He does love being at ledge. It is where it is Numbers' home. Usually he does prefer the right side, as far as I'm aware. Uh, no, I've seen, I've seen him... He swings both ways. He swings, he just swings a little bit both ways uh, on his uh, st stage preference. However, Angel Quest says off the stage here, forced the uppy. Numbers no punish though. I think he was trying to fake out a trump there. Right. He wanted to uh, like Angel to like accidentally looking like right of panic a buffer, you know, a ledge jump or a ledge roll. But he did it almost immediately, buffering his option as soon as he touched the ledge. And Numbers was unable to get a reaction out. Yep, and so now. Numbers at slight percent deficit, but also keep in mind that we fit trainer unless she gets some crazy, you know, offstage gimp, it can be kind of hard for her to kill. Definitely, I think again the, the options that we see the most often with John Numbers killing is obviously that up air and that that um, forward chill, and oftentimes, more times than not, you have to get your opponent disadvantaged to hit with those options. And it's going to be the issue: of, can Numbers really ever get Diddy Kong into disadvantage? And right now, a back air off that ledge trump. Going to be almost the number of stock. Getting right back, a little ledge jump, but a buffer jump from numbers. A great option choice right there. Oh, the down tilt forward are actually not going to connect. Whenever you see him go for that, just assume that down tilt up smash would not have worked. He's right. so familiar with his character, and there we see him getting the down smash to punish the ledger he grab. And again, it is again the, the habit of numbers that when he does grab the ledge, he does tend to re-grab it a lot because he feels like people aren't willing to challenge him. And Angel Cortez is not afraid under any circumstances to challenge John Numbers off the stage with the hitbox that Diddy does provide. He might be going for the classic Angel Cortez right there that decides to opt just more stage control. And while he continues to force Numbers off the stage once again and again and again. Who Numbers managing to sneak and get that banana himself, but doesn't really get anything off of it. We haven't really seen Numbers try and get anything wow. off of banana. He usually just tries to put it in a space where Angel can't really use it. And the intelligent use of banana right there by Angel Cortez to hit the soccer ball back at John Numbers. However, right here, forced off stage, that low recovery from Angel Cortez was brilliant, and that smash is not going to take it just yet, even with all that rage. Oof. What a great snipe with that banana once again, and now John Numbers is at 106%, up throw not going to take it, and definitely a down tilt will spell his demise. Down tilt or a banana grab. Oh, opting not to go for your down tilt up smash. Curious as to why. Yeah, Numbers in definitely a bit of a predicament right here. With 118 angels still on that first stock, as you said earlier, unless FIFA Trainer is getting some crazy offstage gimp, uh, Diddy Kong is really not going to be able to be dying to too many things right here. And really, it's only F-Tilt or in wall space back here, but a wall space back here 
by Agent Cortez, still will not be able to hit it, even with 150% range with that. There was a bait, I swear. It was, yeah, it Numbers, putting his hand on his face, he says, Oh, I knew it. I knew that the barrels was a bait to be up-tilted. Because that's, I mean, that's how numbers would think, you know? I, I, I guess, like, you would think, okay, again, any time you do see a character up here, especially onto the stage, it really is like, okay, a moment where, like, okay, I can go punish this, this is my opportunity. But Angel Cortez is smart enough to know, buffering that up till immediately as he touches the ground, knowing it'd be a kill off for that percent, he's gonna take that stock. Alright, and John Numbers now here on game two, opting to go to town and city, which I can understand why. There's a little bit more room for him to run around, and the difference in the blast zones means that he might actually, uh, uh, you know, get some earlier kills. Right, and I think that is one of the bigger reasons why he does choose the stage. We for Turner, being that he does struggle, or she does struggle to kill for so long, the higher ceilings on um, TNT are definitely going to help him a lot. And there have been many a moment in which John Numbers have gotten, uh, I wouldn't say cheese, but very early kills on this stage in the past before with a Nair 2 up air on the likes of Venia to kill Sage and, all, and the like. You know. And Angel himself, I'm sure, has suffered that sort of. <gasps> oh, but. Oh, the oh, almost immaculate master John Numbers making almost making it back, but just enough was that Diddy Kong down air to take that stock. That Diddy Kong down air is so powerful, and you saw there ending John Numbers' stock so quickly, and now he's playing at a huge deficit, much worse than it was game one. I like the banana throw to uh, backwards with F tilt, though. He hit him with the backwards hit to pop him up so that he could continue this sort of juggle situation. We haven't really had a return to neutral yet. Oh and, uh, my goodness, the best of callouts from John Numbers on the monkey flip in, down airing it almost immediately. Retaliating in kind. You got the down air on me, I got the down air, and maybe the down load on you because there was such a huge like gap before, and all of a sudden this is looking very, very reasonable for John Numbers. Once again, really getting right back into this game, Ooh, that landing caught by Angel Cortez, another down air into the platform that time, no follow up afterward. However, trying to get back to center stage here is Numbers, maybe trying to force back to ledge, trying to get um, Diddy Kong to get, to get off. However, Angel Cortez is giving him absolutely nothing at this ledge and holding there for as long as possible. I think where Angel Cortez, in terms of similarity to the many Diddy's out there, he is so similar to Zero in that he just keeps you at ledge for so very long. Oh yeah, I mean he has his own namesake patented Space Age out of this world, Angel Drop. Yes. Which again, one of the coolest name combos in the game for one. And for two, that banana into down air, as we saw earlier, was so effective against John Numbers and taking that suck. But he fastballs and he kills himself! Oh no! <laughs> numbers John will numbers. take it every day of the week, and we are trying to showing that thumbs up right back to Numbers after his thumbs up. Yeah, I just want to point out John Numbers has the worst victory animations. He, well, <laughs> look at that. He does the he does beef fits win, win animations a lot of the time. See, he predicted it. He did the thumbs up. Well, he I, I heard once that you could control. I think I don't think you can. I, I, I think that I, was a lie. I think that was a myth. I, I think you actually can, but the numbers definitely did not hold a, a D-pad spot on reaction to that. I would almost guarantee you. And really, right now, numbers maybe a little bit of a momentum shifter for him. Um, can perfect that monkey flip there, keeping him off the side of the stage. And I think we're going to see the can uh, Angel Cortez maintain a calm head here. As you know, that early unfortunate fastball really did end up costing in that game number two. And he's looking to just reclaim this this power. I mean, you saw that that game too. He had such a decisive lead with that early down air. Uh, and he ended up dropping the whole thing to a kind of an unfortunate SD. So you need to sort of clear your mind when that happens. Figure out what was giving you such good success leading up to that point and just how to reclaim that. Oh, wow, nice little landing down wow. right there by John Numbers, forcing another inch neutral. Oh, wow, what another <laughs> for it. And uh, John Numbers trying to go back to stage. He does a lot of that when coming off the ledge. One of those big mix ups that he goes for is that empty hop straight into the grab. Angel coming out just in time for trading with Numbers before he could get anything more off of it. Numbers going for the double spot dodge and Angel Cortez actually punishing it. That's how you know these two have played. Right. When Numbers starts spamming spot dodge and Angel is actually punishing it. Right, and we has one of those better spot dodges in the game. Oh, but a potential give here for John Numbers. Oh, those hoops looking like customs right there. Not gonna be able to take the stock off though. We have a John Numbers with a huge lead. Oh, he goes for that dash grab, but Wee Fits her grab range kind of showing its uh, shortcomings. 
Oh, this could be big. The banana throw to forward smash. Going to do some decent damage, but not going to end John Numbers' life just yet. Wow, and now Angel Cortez back in advantage. Great stall by Numbers to keep him in the air. However, ooh, a ledge jump. That's wow, a late ledge jump. No. Wow, still living even with Rage on Town and City. What beautiful DI from Numbers. Able to react, and the up air still not going to take it, but both these players now just dancing around at their own kill percents. Aware of what the enemy can do, goes so deep out there and gets it. And Beautiful again, stuff. Because they have played so much in the past, Angel Cortez is going to know the timing that John Numbers usually stalls with that downbeat where, when he air dodges and punishes not only after the downbeat, but after the air dodge as well. Again, we're seeing Numbers being very patient at the ledge right now. Knows he needs something a little bit on the risky side to take that stock. That tomahawk is going to be something right there. Hoops not getting a little gimp that he wanted on Angel Cortez, but on a landing, that reverse hit of f is going to take him right off the top. Oh yeah, and Numbers once again electing to put himself on ledge here. Angel has been so consistent at that, where he will just, Numbers will have the banana. He throws it and he's just like, mm, yeah, thanks for that back. And it's just, again, we're seeing a lot on these approaches. Numbers is rolling back and then grabbing immediately. Trying to force Diddycon off stage is obviously what is ideal in any any matchup really versus him. So really it's trying to get on Numbers, on Numbers trying to get Diddycon as far off stage as possible is ideal. But right here he's being forced by Angel right off the stage as well. Oh, he's looking for that angel drop, but Numbers being very tricky with his get-up timings. And so he's going to continue to just live out there. And I think Numbers hitting Whoa. the startup. Wow, big damage though coming from that side of John Numbers is a whole lot of percent. Oh, wow, almost trying to catch that banana into a down air. Numbers air dodging away just in time. This is normally the sort of situation that... Uh, no. This is normally the sort of situation that Numbers loves when the, he starts seeing the opponent getting antsy, trying to go for these aggressive down airs. That's usually when he has this sort of backup plan, and once the opponent is, like, sort of irritated to that point, he's just so effective at... Oh, no! Oh, okay, he's no, gonna no, no, be no. fine. He has retained his jump there, gonna be able to get back, and even with, again, John Numbers' mat, mashing on Uppy is still the best that you've ever seen, honestly, on any character, let alone just Wii Fit. Mm -hmm. However, being forced to the edges here is John Numbers once more. Really, again, it's so hard to tell when Numbers is being forced to the edge and when he just actually wants to go there because it feels like it's a safe spot. Using a get-up attack to get right past that down smash of Diddy Kong. And he's going to get deep breathing back. This is a scary situation for Angel Cortez. Missing the trump, however, getting right back to the stage with a fair. Banana going to get grabbed right up by John Numbers. Now these two are just... They know that the next hit might do it. You can see the that they're both sort of s salivating for it. It's like going around each other, looking for this opening. Wow, what a beautiful grab from Numbers. And the trip actually going to get in the way of Angel trying to, you know, convert it into a kill. Oh, wow! I think the perfect shield and the shield off from the banana actually saving John Numbers in that situation. Oh, and in the back end from John Numbers from the short up with 55 seconds left on the clock is going to be able to take game number two over Angel Cortez. I wasn't even paying attention to the clock. <laughs> That's going to be a factor coming up. And it is so difficult to time out a character like Wii Fit Trainer because of all the healing that she has, the 2% from deep breathing and the 2% that she gets from sun salutation, while also keeping you out of her range can make it really difficult to time her out, especially with a character like Diddy Kong. That really has no way of healing, mm -hmm. obviously. And really, once you get your combos off Diddy Kong, you're getting a lot off of each interaction. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like, I've actually seen numbers time. I remember there was one match in particular against Sinji, and oh, that is. It was, it was a timeout, and then we, like, numbers went back and looked, and he healed, like, almost 70%. It, again, just with those. Especially against, like, again, a player like Sinji and another, maybe less defensive player like Angel Cortez, numbers really knows that he has that option on deck if he ever has to use it. Ended up not needing it right there. That rage back air doing an excellent job of taking out the stock. And right here, we're seeing a small lead for numbers in the start of this game, just forcing Angel Cortez off to the side and doing an excellent job of keeping him out as much as physically possible. Oh yeah, we're starting to see Angel go deep for these, uh, in order to catch numbers. And once again, that's sort of num what numbers Great likes. Numbers. Oh. oh wow, but it'll, the, 
early hoops being unable to catch that Diddy up B. So a little bit um, trigger happy there was numbers on that up B. I think he was just reading a, uh, a fast option like the, the immediate monkey flip or maybe just, you know, the immediate barrels. And Angel Cortez aware of that just stalls himself just enough that he manages to make it back. But Numbers has the lead right now. And you can see really how well Angel Cortez does know the matchup. Being that you saw on that um, soccer ball setup that Numbers just did right there, opting not to shield as he knows exactly what Numbers is numbers looking for. Opting instead to jump over it. However, he's going to be forced off stage by Numbers once more. Right back to stage. A miss input, I believe, on that soccer ball. Maybe a little too early. Oh, wow. And a beefy upbeat. Incredible by Numbers to force uh, Angel off the ledge. You never know what mix-up he has waiting for you. It's Normally, it's people People just think like, oh, I'm, you know, being on the ledge, it's bad. You know, you, you, you die for it. But Numbers is just, he's just like, I don't see what the problem is. And he just comes up with so many creative ways of dealing with it. And while a neutral B from Angel Cortez is going to basically trade with that John Numbers neutral B, and he is going to be able to take that first stock over Angel Cortez, a back air, another potential edge guard situation, not going to get off of it though. Let's, once more is John Numbers. Yeah. And John Numbers with this lead, if, if he takes the stock, he then knocks Angel into losers, oh and that's God. it! And as you say it, he goes deep off stage, and John Numbers is ready for it, drops off that ledge, and does an immediate side B to take Angel Cortez's stock.